Beneath the rocks of San Lucas, 800 miles south of Los Angeles Harbor, the trim racing yacht Sirocco, fishing bound, prepares to lower sail for anchorage. From the world over, fish swarm to these warm waters, a sort of marine Times Square of underwater traffic. So, on this cruise, we have an archer, Howard Hill, who plans to hunt with bow and arrow the sharks that always follow such prey. A barrel of live anchovy bait is ready for those in the adventurous party who prefer to fish with the regulation rod and reel. But this archer needs no bait, only a target and marksmanship. And uh, speaking of targets, the bung of the live bait barrel has worked loose, Howard. Now, an expert archer might retrieve the bung and put it back in the barrel. Yes, and do it all with his bow and arrow. Will you try it, Howard? Why not? But first, a line must be attached to the arrow so he can bring back the stopper, if he hits it. And such a bobbing object is a difficult target, even for a rifle, with its two mechanical sights. Right on the nose. And to repeat it in slow motion, and there's no way to trick this shot. Again, it's a hit. Half of the job is done. Now to bring back the arrow in normal speed for the second part of the stunt, to shoot the bung back in the barrel. Howard Hill has held practically every major archery title, and his skill with bow and arrow was first brought to the screen as Robin Hood's captain of archers. Here's a shot. Smack in dead center. And remember, that barrel's far from a steady target. The slight sway of the deck further complicating this precise marksmanship. Demonstrated now in slow motion. Mm. And again, there's no possible way for the camera to fake these shots. Well, the bung is back in the barrel and the bait is saved. A mighty handy man to have around, with a reach like that of another well-known archer the pelican, who is his own bow and arrow. When this peculiar bird is hungry, a normal thing with him, he looks over the excellent bill of fare, carefully makes his selection, and shoots himself down. What could be simpler, especially in the well-stocked larder of San Lucas Harbor? Uh-oh, here's competition. Japanese fishermen reaping a finny harvest of their own in a purse scene. But the pelican's a wise bird. So when he sees that competition has a corner on the market, well, he drops everything and joins the competition. Free lunch, boys. Come on over, and do they come. If it is true what they say about the pelican, and his beak does hold more than his stomach can, then these fishermen are surely in for a loss. And here's the payoff. Walking home from the fish fry. What a meal. Loaded to beak capacity and far too heavy for a takeoff. Yes, sir, a wonderful bird is the pelican. Uh-oh, the most deadly creature of the deep. Forever hungry and tireless in his ceaseless search for prey. There it is, the sinister fin. Certainly not an unfamiliar sight around here, but a welcome one for these natives who have heard that there's a strange hunter out there in that anchored yacht, and they go to get the man who shoots sharks with bow and arrow. They know the only good shark is a dead one, and have a natural respect for the bow and arrow, a weapon their Aztec forebears used with effect. Wait a minute, boys. Hey, wait a minute. That's no place to go swimming. With 400 pounds of hungry gray shark on the loose, He'd swallow any one of you whole in one quick gulp. Hey, gang, wait for me. These Mexican fathers would be paddling for dear life in the other direction if they knew the sort of company their sons were keeping. There has been considerable debate whether a shark will attack live human beings. But somehow, everyone seems reluctant to go swimming with one unarmed and prove his point one way or another. But here's proof enough He's right in there with them. But they see him now. Swim for dear life. He's turning, heading right for his defenseless prey. That's right, fight him off. From the face of courage, they run like cowards. This is their meat. Oh, did that devil get him? No, he's safe. They all are. But the shark is still there, Howard. Shoot! Got him, just back of the brain. Now the shot again in slow motion. Not a very difficult target for Howard but a very dangerous one to miss. 
And when a shark is mortally wounded, he spins in a vicious circle. Spinning, but not reaping. He's going nowhere fast. The life of that voracious killer is over. He's made his last kill with those cruel jaws, armed with a double row of razor-sharp teeth, which can snap off a leg. Yes, yours too, Howard, in one quick bite. But this affair is definitely a closed issue. And with the hope there's more big fish in the sea, the Sirocco heads out into tuna fishing waters, her sides bristling with heavy tackle of these Isaac Waltons of the sea. Like the marlin swordfish, the tuna roams throughout the world, avoiding the only really cold regions. A strike! Set your hook, boy, and is he happy? It's only a baby tuna, but what a palate teaser for appetites whetted by clean sea air and exercise. Bring her to gaff. Hey, what have you got? Oh, you were robbed. Sure enough, but where's the thief? Uh-oh, a big hammerhead shark. And for him, that tuna was only a small mouthful. Better luck next time, boy. Or you'll never catch a shark napping, because from time of birth, he never sleeps. Never once relaxes a constant vigil for prey. Well, a skipjack, and he's hooked for fair. Heave ho, my hearty, bring him in fast. Your first tuna was only a teaser for the enormous appetite of that hammer-headed hijacker, who even now seems to grin behind his horrible snout. Well, whose fish is it to be this time? Yours or the opposition's? Looks from a distance a little like some of both. Yeah, 50-50 to the shark, and what a neat bite. There he is, waiting around for the next course. Take our small boat and go after him. Can you do it? Well, all right, I'll try anything once. It's easy to understand why the word shark has become the proverbial symbol for a greediness that knows no bounds, sparing nobody and nothing in its search for satisfaction. But there is more to this mighty beast of prey. It is the swiftest, strongest, and most agile slaughter machine nature has been able to produce. He's after that bait, all right, but this time there's a catch to it. This baby is hooked, all right, but it's something again to bring in an enraged hammerhead with such a slender line. One good lash of that powerful tail would smash their small boat to smithereens. You're playing him right. Keep that line tight. Keep it. Uh oh that's all he needs. Look at him go. That shark can cause those boys a lot of trouble. He's heading right for the boat. Can you get a shot in, Howard? Look out. Don't turn that boat over. No, too late. Say, those boys have to do some real swimming to win this race. He's right behind you and coming fast. If you ever spurted, there's your inspiration now. Those flailing arms and legs are the first object of attack. He cripples first. Shoot now, Howard, now or never. Here was a turn in events not anticipated. There's the arrow. We merely set out to photograph a shark being played from a small boat. Difficult and dangerous, surely, since sharks before this have crushed or tipped over smaller craft. But this is something else again. That boy's foot is only inches away from those snapping jaws and drawing closer. Yes, sir, a mighty close call and something those boys aren't likely to forget. No more small boats for them. After this, they'll do all their fishing for these babies from nothing less than the Queen Mary. So it's goodbye, Mr. Fish. His marauding days are over. And instead of shark-eating boys, that night the tables were turned. And don't think a shark steak can't be good. Very good.